With Andor getting better word of mouth than a lot of other Star Wars projects in recent years, it still was a ratings disaster for Disney and for Lucasfilm. Just one more indication that fans have walked away from Disney Star Wars, that fans have walked away after they were basically told, well, this isn't made for you. But despite all of this evidence that we have in front of our very eyes, it's clear that Lucasfilm still wants to pretend like they listen to the fans. But unfortunately, when they say that, when they say, we listen to the fans, it's only one type of fan they're talking about. They're talking about people on Twitter with pronouns and rainbow flags in their profiles. They're talking about people that care more about activism instead of actual entertainment. They're talking about the woke activists that do not represent the actual core audience, but all too often, those are the only ones they listen to. And now they're confirming exactly that. Star Wars changed skin color of clones after whitewashing backlash confirms director. Or to put it another way, like Bounding Into Comics did, Star Wars and Lucasfilm caved to activists calling them racists over the Bad Batch character designs. Yeah, it seems like every time that Disney Star Wars listens to the fans, we end up with them listening to woke lunatics, to woke activists. The same ones who are behind getting Gina Carano fired from Disney are the ones that can affect change in this way, even with little to no actual influence. These are the people that Disney wants to listen to because quite frankly, those are the same people that work at Star Wars, that work at Lucasfilm, that work all throughout Disney. Lucasfilm and Star Wars officially admitted they caved to numerous activists that accused them of racism over their character designs in the animated series Star Wars The Bad Batch. Back in May of 2021, an activist group going by the, an activist going by the name of Nessa from Project Stardust claimed the members of The Bad Batch were distinctly whiter than other clones. Nessa wasn't alone in this claim. The activist cited fellow activist and Tumblr user CloneHub, who created the website Unwhitewash the Bad Batch. On the website, CloneHub argues, the Bad Batch has been whitewashed in two ways, through their visual and physical design and through their voice actor. Of course, D. Bradley Baker is the one who has been voicing the clones, every single clone, since 2008 for 15 years, but now all of the sudden you freaks want to hop on this, probably because you're like 15 years old and have no idea what you're fucking talking about. That's likely the reason why. But D. Bradley Baker is a white man from Colorado who has chosen to play a group of men of color with an ethnically tied dialectical accent. If that still isn't clear, Baker being white and doing this accent is equivalent to him being hired to play a black character and then poorly attempting an African American vernacular English accent, aka a black scent. It's racist. And we did see again a, a bunch of these freaks and weirdos like this. It's bad enough they got a white American to do a frankly quite racist imitation of a Maori actors to play the clones in animation without them straight up bleaching them. No way I'm possibly watching that shit. And if we go back to this, you can see some of the changes that they did make that were noticeable to a lot of people, right? This was the first trailer, then this was the final footage you saw. A couple differences, just a couple, uh, you know, a couple shades of difference right there. But as some people point out, uh, look at Jane Theory here. I don't see whitewashing or race swapping. Tamara Morrison isn't just Maori, he's European and Maori. It's true, he's like over half Scottish, I think. Something like that. He's not dark skinned. He tans well, but his complexion is white. So I would say if you need to unwhitewash the Bad Batch, maybe you need to unwhitewash the Book of Boba Fett. I, I don't know. I mean, look at some of these pictures right here. I mean, Ming-Na Wang, quite frankly, looks darker than he does in a, in a couple of these. I'm sure that when Tamora Morrison's out in the sun and tans very well, I bet he can get fairly dark skin, just as some white people can. But the idea that uh, uh, Tamora Morrison is just this like strikingly dark skinned person is just kind of a joke, to be honest with you. But that didn't stop. That did not stop people associated with the Bad Batch. The director even responded to this. These are the fans that they listened to, right? These freaks with pronouns in their bios who don't know what gender they are, who have absolutely no spending power, and at the end of the day, don't make up a very big portion of said fan base. Uh, but as more and more normal people continue to leave Disney Star Wars, I guess that percentage does continue to get higher of the fan, the fan makeup that are these activists. But let's go down to this response here. In a one-on-one -on -one interview with Collider's own Maggie Lovett, the, Bla the Bad Batch director Brad Rao addressed the fan-driven movement movement, saying the team had gone back to correct the previously released episodes. As Rouse said, 
We listened to all the concerns of the fans. Interestingly, in season one, before season one even came out, we're always doing this. We went back to look at skin tones. We made some corrections to make sure we're being true to the legacy of the clones in Clone Wars. Absolutely, 100%. But of course, that's not enough for, for some of these activists, right? As previously presented in the trailer, the heroes of this series, the ones who managed to break Imperial conditioning, were presented with far lighter skin and more Eurocentric features compared to the more rigid, obedient counterparts. Uh, in season two, there's some merit, but the Batch, with the exception of Echo, do appear darker than they did in the first trailer. But taking only season two trailer into account, the concerns that some fans have pointed out are still glaringly obvious. Yes, it will never, ever be enough for the activists, so maybe you should stop bending the knee to them. Maybe, Lucasfilm, if you instead decided to listen to the vast majority of fans out there that care about Star Wars, that have been talking about Star Wars, talking about the mistakes you've been making for the past decade, instead of continuing you into zero on on the woke activist ones that represent your own ideology then maybe disney star wars could see itself in a better position but as of right now i don't think that's going to happen anytime soon let me know what you think about all this in the comment section below smash a like button subscribe to the channel ring the bell for notifications share this video out there and i'll talk to you later